Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and today I want to talk a bit about Mass Effect Andromeda. I recently finished the game after about 50 hours of playtime. I've done most of the main, oh, I mean, obviously I've done all the main quests, but I've done most of the side quests and uh, finished majority of the minor tasks that the game has and explored, you know, most of the world. And um, the best word I can pick for this game is mediocre. So it's, you know, it has some good things, it has some bad things, but none of it is quite as memorable as any other part of Mass Effect. So let's talk specifically about um, some of the things that are good and bad. So there are basically three good things that I can note about this game. Number one, I really love the environments, like the artists and the um, designers did a very cool job of delivering a pretty fancy environments in, I mean, Frostbite is a very uh, nice looking engine in general, and they did a great job of doing the cool environments. Uh, along with the uh, NVIDIA Anzel that allows you to do those 3D screenshots, it's actually really, really cool to play around with. Um, the next fun part is the combat, actually. So it's it's ac way more um, action-based than the previous parts. It's way more dynamic, and I found it to be pretty fun, actually, for my liking. Uh, albeit a bit repetitive, so it gets boring closer to the end, but, you know, if you don't stretch the game out as much as I did, you probably won't get bored. Uh, and as a um, consequence of combat being fun for me, I found the multiplayer to be pretty good for a couple of hours, because multiplayer is essentially just combat and combat alone. Uh, you, it's a horde-based horde uh, mo mode for, like, up to four players, I think. So, now let's talk about all the bad things that this game has which you know it's it's not actually uh, i wouldn't put all of them in a completely bad bad uh, category the only like really bad things are basically animations that are i mean you've probably seen this there's been so much talk about that and there's so many memes about that already the animations are at places are pretty bad but you know within my what 53 50 whatever hours of playtime, the Completely terrible animations were present, I don't know, maybe in half an hour of animations or something among those lines. So majority of them are okay-ish. They are not bad, they are just mediocre, as I said. The next uh, bad thing is actually the user interface and the whole crafting loadout UI thing that is done in absolutely abysmal way. Um, the way it's done is that you cannot equip any piece of gear wherever you want. So if you wanna, if you picked up a new shiny rifle or a new shiny helmet in the battlefield and you wanna equip it, you actually have to go back to base and use the loadout screen to do that. And this, in my opinion, is absolutely stupid in a game that is RPG and about loot, actually. There is a decent amount of loot in this game and the fact that you cannot try it right away is kind of disappointing. On top of that, uh, most of the guns don't really have detailed descriptions, so before you actually try it out, you don't know how the hell it works, because it can be a plasma weapon, it can be an electric beam weapon, it can be a normal projectile weapon, and you wouldn't really know that before you try it out, which is kind of stupid in my opinion. And the last thing that is, I mean, I wouldn't call it completely bad, but is the most annoying one, let's put it this way, is actually the animation. This game has a billion of loading screen animations that are repeated every time you do something. And some of them are like, I understand, okay, you need to load the planet, so it's fine, show me landing sequence, it's okay. But when I fly on the world map or galaxy map between the planets, I don't need to see 22 second animations every time I do that. It just gets annoying, it gets in my way of enjoying the game. And this is like the most infuriating part of it. Uh, and then there's all those things that are not really bad, but they uh, stop or prevent Mass Effect Andromeda from being a great game. They just, the, the things that make it mediocre, you know? Number one is stuff like bland characters that don't have any personalities to them. There is like literally one or two characters that are interesting to talk to, that are interesting to hear, that are interesting to 
find more about one of them being your father who dies in the first minutes of the game and the other one depending on who you ask for me was for example drag the krogan guy who hangs around with you and I, I found him to be pretty like interesting he's one of the m most interesting ones that hang out with you at least he's you know not too generic but again he's not too much different from all the old Krogans that you've seen in the older part, so he's kind of cliched as well. And this is the next major, like issue with this game. There's cliches everywhere. There's literally, there's no way to spoil this game because it spoils itself. There is not even a single quest that will make you go, oh, I did not expect that. Each and every single one of them will end in something that you will see a mile away. It's like, you know, you start this quest and you already know what's going to happen. There's, <laughs> there's almost never a quest that will surprise you. And this is just so sad for a game like this. The next problem is lack of meaningful choices. So it seems like whatever dialogue options, whatever resolutions you pick, they don't seem to affect anything. It's like, you know, okay, maybe you get a different branch of a side quest that goes slightly to the right from the current objective and then goes back to it because all the quests end in exactly the same ways, just maybe with different dialogues. And, you know, after playing something like Witcher 3 where your choices had like huge impacts on the storyline and the world, this is just so boring. And this brings us to the next point where basically player has no to little impact on the world itself. So the idea is that we are the colonists, right? We are the first people in this galaxy, first uh, from the Milky Way anyway. And we're trying to settle there. We're terraforming those worlds to make them habitable and all that stuff, but nothing happens. We turn on the uh, this terraforming world things and then you just get a bit less uh, hazards on a and that's it. It's like, I, you know, I want to see the world transform. I want to see the world transform from that desert to something like lush forest or whatever. But that never happens. Even in the uh, like ending credits, ending scenes, the, the epilogue, you, you see some sort of people going happy, which is again, terrible animations, but it doesn't show you any changes to the world, not even in a cutscene. And this is so disappointing. You work so hard to make those worlds better, to bring them to 100% of you know viability, but that doesn't change anything but that number. And this is infuriating from my perspective. Um, so yeah, in general, you know, it's a very, very, very mediocre game. And uh, actually, a uh, thing that if not for the terrible animations they had here and there, People would probably already forgotten about it after like few days after release because the only one who would care about it would be people still playing it and, you know, doing the combat stuff like me, for example. Um, so overall, the whole game feels like the developers just didn't get enough time to implement all the ideas they have because in places here and there, you actually see, you know, what they wanted to do with it. But it looks like they was just like, okay, we don't have time, so we're just going to leave it as it is. And this is so, so sad. It's just... It has the potential to be an amazing game, but everything, like literally every part of it, is just so mediocre, it gets boring, right? Like, I like I don't even know what to say. So it's like, have you tried the, if you haven't tried the uh, free trial that they have, you can download it and try it. And if you like the combat, and if you think that, you know, like 40, 50 hours of that combat won't get you bored, then I would suggest you picking up this game on a discount um, like half a year after that. Maybe they'll patch some of the things because I had some uh, technical problems with the game itself. It crashed on me a couple of times, but I think that's actually it. So no like other game breaking issues with it. Just a few crashes, I assume due to memory leaks or something along those lines. Uh, but it definitely does not is not worth like the full AAA price right now for me at least, right? And uh, if you don't like combat, don't even think about it. This game has nothing else to offer but, uh, you know, good enough combat and maybe some nice environments for screenshots. Which makes me very, very sad as a fan of Mass Effect franchise and a person who, like, owned and finished all the previous three parts. And um, I actually, talking about meaningful choices, I would compare this one to the ending of Mass Effect 3. This game, like, the, the whole game is basically the ending of the Mass Effect 3 which is, if you played it, the original ending, let's uh, call it this way. If you played it, you know that it was very disappointing. And um, yeah, so if you want combat, this game is worth picking up. If you 
don't want combat, then don't even look at that. This, you know, it's, it's not a good RPG, let's put it this way. Right, thank you for watching, and as usual, see you next time. Bye!